All right, this is lesson uh, 6-3, tests for parallelograms. So far in chapter 6, we've talked about polygons, how to find the sum of all of the interior angles of any polygon, no matter how many sides it has, how to find the measure of each interior angle for a regular polygon, meaning all of the interior angles have to be the same size. And then we talked about in the last lesson, 6-2, what a parallelogram is and properties of parallelograms. So this is really a continuation of 6-2, okay? It's a new lesson all on its own, but it really goes hand in hand with 6-2. So it's just testing a four-sided polygon to see if it is in fact a parallelogram. So if at least one of these, it does not have to be all of them, just one of them or more is true, then a four-sided shape is a parallelogram. So we'll say, at least one. If at least one of these is true, then if all of these then, then our four-sided shape like this guy up here is in fact a parallelogram. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So this pair of opposite sides have to be parallel and this pair of opposite sides have to be parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So that could be true, right? If that's true, then we know it's a parallelogram. Second one, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So we don't have to know they're parallel. It's enough to just know that they're congruent. So if these opposite sides are the same size and these opposite size, sides are the same size, then we know this is a parallelogram. So both pairs have to be parallel or both sides have to be congruent for us to know that a four-sided shape is a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. So opposite angles are diagonal, right? D and B have to be congruent, and A and C have to be congruent for this to be a parallelogram. You can't just have one pair of opposite sides congruent. Both pairs of opposite, ang not sides, angles have to be congruent. And then if we know that the diagonals bisect each other, so this diagonal connecting these opposite angles cuts is cut in half by this diagonal connecting these opposite angles, which is also cut in half. Both diagonals have to be cut in half. If we just know that one fact and none of the rest of this, this by itself is enough to know if that's true, then this is a parallelogram. One pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel. So up here, both pairs of opposite sides could just be parallel. Or both pairs of opposite sides could be congruent. But we had to have both pairs to be one thing. Down here, one pair could be both things, congruent and parallel. So either both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, both pairs of opposite sides are, are parallel, or just one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. We could say this side and this side are parallel to each other, and they're the same size. That would be enough to know that this entire thing is a parallelogram. We don't have to know about the top and the bottom too. Just one pair of opposite sides can be both congruent and parallel. So if any one of these things or more is true, that's enough to know this is a parallelogram. There's a few examples here. This refers directly to this guy. Basically, I talked through him here. And now we're going to use that uh, information to kind of solve for variables mathematically here. All right, so it says find x and y so that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Okay, so here, for this to be a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, right? We could say they're parallel, but we don't know what the slope is, so that's not going to help us. We can figure out the length of each side, right? And so if the lengths of opposite sides are the same for both pairs of opposite sides, then this is a parallelogram. So for them to be, for us to solve for x and y, we have to set opposite sides equal to each other, right? So I'm going to set... 2x minus 2 equal to the side across from it here, which is 12, and solve for x. I also am going to set these opposite sides equal to each other. 2y is going to be equal to 8. So here I can solve for x, add 2, 2x equals 14, divide by 2, and x is going to equal 7. 
And then for y, I just have to divide both sides by 2, and y equals 4. Okay, so for this to be a parallelogram, opposite sides have to be congruent, both pairs. And if I make them congruent, if I set them equal to each other, I can solve for x. But these are only true, x and y, they're only true if opposite sides are congruent, which would make that a parallelogram. Number two, opposite angles have to be congruent, right? So I can start by setting these opposite angles equal to each other. 11x equals 55. Okay, and then to solve for x, divide by 11, x equals 5. All right, and then remember in a parallelogram, and we didn't say this up at the top, but we know it's also true, right? In a parallelogram, consecutive sides have to be supplementary. So if I know that this is 55, this side next to it and this side on this, this next to it this way, have to equal 180. So whether I add these two together has to equal 180, or whether I add these two, they have to equal 180, which means these angles across from each other would have to be the same, right? So what's 180 minus 55? Well, 180 minus 50 is 130, minus five more is 125, right? So this angle would have to equal 125. So to solve for y, I set this angle, 5y, equal, to 125, and then I can divide both sides by 5, and y equals 5. Lots of 5s there. Okay, next one, number 3. Here, again, I have diagonals, right? So I know diagonals across from each other are congruent in a parallelogram, so I can set 5y equal to 25, divide both sides by 5, y equals 5. And I know consecutive angles, not opposite angles, but the ones right next to each other in a parallelogram have to equal 180. So if this is 25, 25 plus what equals 180, right? Well, 20 plus 160 equals 180. So 25 plus 155. 5x would have to be equal to 155 degrees. For this to be a parallelogram, both of these have to add up to 180, right? Same with this angle over here. It would also have to be 5x, right? So we just want to solve for x. So we know it has to equal 155. 5 times what equals 155? x equals 31. Okay, so if x equals 31, 5 times 31 is 155. 155 and 25 is 180, which makes this a parallelogram. Number four. We have parallel sides here, right? One pair of opposite sides has to be parallel and congruent. So if we're looking at this pair of opposite sides, if they're congruent, I can set 18 equal to 6y, divide both sides by 6, and y is going to equal 3. If they're parallel and they're cut by this transversal, it means this angle has to be congruent to this angle, right? So 9x has to equal 45. Divide both sides by 9, and x equals 5. So one pair of opposite sides has to be congruent, so we set them equal to each other, and has to be parallel, and if that's the case and it's cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So we could solve for x and y. Number five, we've got um, both pairs of opposite sides can be parallel, right? So if I have this top guy is parallel to the bottom guy, and they're cut by this transversal, it means this angle has to be the same as this angle, right? So I could set x plus y equal to 24. Well, that's great and that's true, but I have to know what one of these letters is to solve for the other. So let's look at the other sides first, right? I'll do it in purple. This side has to be parallel to this side. Remember our rule says that both pairs of opposite sides of a parallelogram have to be parallel. So if that's the case, then this angle has to be congruent to this angle because they're alternate interior angles. So 2x would have to equal 30. Okay, so now I can solve for x. x is going to equal 15. 
Once I know what x is, I can plug it in here. 15 plus y equals 24. Subtract 15 from both sides, and y equals 9. So for this to be a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite sides have to be parallel, and when you cut through parallel lines with a transversal, your alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, number six, last one for this side of the page. Here, we have to have both pairs of sides, both, both pairs of opposite angles have to be congruent in a um, parallelogram, right? That's this bottom, uh, not bottom, this guy right here. The diagonals by, oh no, that's not one pair of opposite angles, sorry, this one. I'm like, I know I read it. Both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. That's the one we're looking for, this guy right here. So down here, number six, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, these guys are congruent to each other, these guys are congruent to each other, and it tells me these guys are congruent to each other, right? So 3x is equal to 3x. 6y is equal to 6y. We know all four of these angles are all equal to each other, okay? And if all four angles are equal in a four-sided shape, that means they're all 90 degrees. So to solve for x and y here, we're going to set 6y equal to 90, and I'm going to set 3x equal to 90. And I can solve. So divide by 6, divide by 6, y equals... 15, and here divide by 3, divide by 3, x equals 30. Okay, because remember if opposite sides are equal, then this guy's 6y, this guy's 6y. These sides are equal, so this is 3x and this is 3x, and then these two are marked equal. So 3x is equal to 6y. So that means all four angles are congruent. So if I take the total sum of the inside angles for a four-sided shape, that's 360 degrees, and divide by four, each angle is 90 degrees. That's how we solve for these.